Hello everyone, here is another video for Orcube channel. In this video, I'm going to explain dehydration of alcohol. For dehydration of alcohol, we can use sulfuric acid. Alcohol in the presence of sulfuric acid lose one molecule water and they can produce alkene. This reaction called dehydration. In addition of sulfuric acid, we can use another reagent, phosphorus oxychloride in pyridine. This is the structure for pyridine and it's a base. The product is alkene. The mechanism for first reaction is E1, so we involving formation of carbocation and for second reaction it is E2. I'm going to explain both of these reactions in this video. Let us start with E1 reaction. Here is the first example for dehydration of alcohol by sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is one of the strongest acids and hydroxy group in alcohol has lone pair. So this hydroxy group can play the basic role and take one proton from sulfuric acid. Then we have protonation of alcohol and also we have the anion for sulfuric acid. This group, OH2 positive or oxenium ion, it's an outstanding living group and easily leave the structure to produce water and carbocation. So the middle carbon lost the living group and it has positive charge plus water. Then this carbocation on its alpha carbon or adjacent carbon, it has hydrogen. Water can attack and take one of these hydrogen so the CH bond moves to the positive carbon and forms an alkene. Formation of alkene in this example is simple and we have one possible product. But because formation of carbocation, we may have more than one product and sometimes we also have rearrangement. Let's have some more example for this reaction. Here is a second example. We would like to have dehydration of two butanol. First step is protonation of OH group. So OH group, it converts to OH2 positive, then it leaves the structure to form carbocation. This carbocation has two different types of hydrogen on its left and right carbons. Water has two possibilities to form alkene. If water attacks to blue hydrogen, then these bonds come here and it forms one butene. But water also can attack to the green hydrogen and then this bond moves here. So we should have double bond between these two carbon. So we have two different type of products. If we have more than one product, ZSEF rule can predict the major product. The ZSEF rule, it says more stable alkene is going to be major product. This alkene, the double bond has two alkyl group and this alkene has only one alkyl group. So alkene with more substituent, they are more stable. So this alkene is the major product, but we also need to keep in mind that this alkene can have cis and trans isomers as well, but the first product doesn't have that. So basically for this reaction, we have actually three different products. Here is the next example. Again, we have the same process we have OH2 positive protonation of hydroxy group, then formation of carbocation. Now here we have a secondary carbocation, but the adjacent carbon is tertiary. So this carbocation go to rule rearrangement by hydride shift to form tertiary carbocations. Now we have two different carbocation in this reaction and we have alkene product from both of these carbocation. 
For the first carbocation, we have hydrogen on the right side and on the left side. If water take this hydrogen, we have double bond here. So we have this product. And if water take this hydrogen, we have this product. For the next carbocation, again, we have two different types of hydrogen. If water take this hydrogen, we have double bond here. And if water take the blue hydrogen, we have double bond here. Well, these two products are the same. So in total, we have three different products. And this alkene, it has two substituents. This alkene has three different alkyl group. And this one again has two alkyl group. So the major product based on the ZSF rule is this alkene because it's more stable and it has more alkyl group. Here is next example. Again, we have OH2 positive. We have protonation of alcohol. Then water leaf structure forms carbocation. This carbocation is secondary and the adjacent carbon is quaternary. So it can easily go through the rearrangement by alkyl shift and form this carbocation, a tertiary carbocation. Again, we have two carbocation and both of them, they can produce alkene. This carbocation has hydrogen on the right side and on the left side. But this carbocation only has hydrogen on its right side. So if water attack to this hydrogen, we will have double bond on the right side. But here water has two different possibility. Water can take the blue hydrogen, then we have double bond here. Also water can take this hydrogen, then we have double bond between these two carbon. Then this will be our product. So we have three different products. Let's see which one is the major product regarding the ZSF rule. This alkene group, it has only one alkyl. Here, the double bond has two different alkyl. And here, the double bond has four alkyl group. So regarding the ZSF rule, this is our major product. And here is the last example for E1 reaction. Again, we have protonation of hydroxy group, then water leave structure to form carbocation. This carbocation has a special rearrangement. When we have double bond in our structure of carbocation, sometimes the double bond can move like this, especially if we can have five or six member ring. So this double bond attacks here. Then it make a new bond with this carbon. Now this carbon lost one of its bond, the double bond. So it will be positive. So we have a tertiary carbocation, but the rearrangement is a little different from previous examples. Right now this tertiary carbocation has hydrogen on three different position. I show them by three different color. And there are three different possibility for formation of alkene. We may have also product from this carbocation, but I'm only explaining for the arrangement in this example. So if we take yellow hydrogen, we have this product. If we take blue hydrogen, by water, we have this product. And if we take the green hydrogen by water, then we have this alkene. And of course, the yellow one is our major product regarding the 
they itself rule it's a tetra substituted alkene we can have dehydration of water by another method using phosphorus oxychloride in pyridine and that reaction doesn't produce any carbocation and because in E2 reaction we don't have carbocation then the possibility for formation of different alkene and have a mixture is less than E1 reaction let's have two examples for E2 reaction as well if we use phosphorus oxychloride this is the structure for phosphorus oxychloride OH group attack to the phosphorus and expelling one chloride then it converts to OPOCl2 this group is a very good living group and also in the mixture we have pyridine this is the structure for pyridine it's a base and it can attack and take one hydrogen and simultaneously these electrons come here and expelling this good living group as a result we have an alkene and the mechanism is e2 so there is no formation of carbocation in this reaction now because we don't have any carbocation prediction of the product is easier and we don't need to write the mechanism every time and we can easily write the products for the reaction here is the first example we have phosphorus oxychloride in pyridine we have hydrogen on the right and left side so the only possible products are these two if we take hydrogen from right side we have this alkene and if we take hydrogen from left side we have this alkene and regarding the ZSF rule this is our major product for E2 reaction hydrogens always need to be on the opposite side of leaving group or anti-parallel take a look to this example we may think on the right side we have one hydrogen and on the left side we have also hydrogen so we may have two different products like these two but the truth is this product never forms the reason is leaving group and hydrogen they should be empty in e2 reaction so when this oh converts to leaving group we have o p o c l2 in the front and this hydrogen in the front cannot have e2 elimination reaction but on the left side we have two hydrogen one hydrogen is in back another hydrogen is in front and only this yellow hydrogen can go through the e2 reaction because it is empty regarding the leaving group so the only product it forms is this one it is very important to pay attention to orientation of hydrogen when we have e2 reaction Thank you for watching this video. For watching more video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.